Information discussed in this podcast may be sensitive in nature to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Parents take their children to parks every day. They can run off some steam, they can play with other children, and they can enjoy some time outside. A trip to the park is supposed to be a fun and enjoyable time. In 1989, there would be multiple instances in which a park was not a safe place. For two families in particular, who lived in the Martin Luther King Jr. Towers in Harlem, New York. For these families, a children's playground will forever haunt their memories. In May of 1989, Allison Dansby, along with her mother, took her young children to a playground near their home. Allison left to run to the store, and when she returned just 30 minutes later, she couldn't see her two-year-old son playing. Her mother said she had just took her eyes off of him for a second. Two-year-old Christopher Dansby had disappeared. Three months later, in August of 1989, Rosa Glover took her 19-month-old son to the park at Martin Luther King Jr. Towers, also the same park where Allison Dansby had taken her son. Rosa sat on a park bench with her son Shane, and two older children approached them, asking if they could play with Shane. At first, Rosa was reluctant. These children were older. But she finally gave in and let them take Shane over to the swings. As soon as the children got to the swing set, a man sat down and struck up a conversation with Rosa. She took her eyes off of her son for just a moment, and when she looked back, her son was gone. The two children that had been playing with Shane said they didn't see where he went. Shane Walker had disappeared. Where are Christopher Dansby and Shane Walker? Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Where Are They podcast. This story is completely baffling and really unlike any other story I've told. These boys went missing three months apart, but the amount of similarities between the two disappearances are impossible to deny. Now, there is no actual evidence that the two cases are related, but it's hard to imagine that they aren't when you hear all of the details. These young boys did go missing back in 1989, but with technology advancing as much as it has in recent years, and more and more cold cases being solved every day, I have hopes that this case, both of these cases, can be solved. I really do hope the cases of Christopher Dansby and Shane Walker will soon be among the solved cold cases in the United States. Maybe this is the year. At the corner of Lenox Avenue and West 114th Street in the Manhattan neighborhood of Harlem sits the Martin Luther King Jr. Playground. This playground, this park, is located next to the Martin Luther King Jr. Towers. This park consists of park benches and swing sets, along with other children's playground equipment. It was a nice, relaxing place for families, and it was visited often, especially by those living in the adjacent towers. On May 18th, 1989, Allison Dansby took her children to the park in the late afternoon. She was accompanied by her mother. While the children were playing, Allison decided to walk over to a nearby store. Her mom said she would stay and watch the kids. As Allison returned to the park, just a half an hour later, she noticed that she could only see one of her children. She couldn't find her two year old son, Christopher. After a frantic search by both her and her mother, they realized that Christopher had vanished and they called in the authorities. Allison's mother had said she had only taken her eyes off of the toddler for a moment. Witnesses at the park had seen Christopher. They had seen him playing with a red ball. Allison's mother had also seen him playing with that red ball. However, the ball didn't belong to Christopher. 
And when law enforcement searched for that ball or even the owner of the ball, they came up empty. No one knew where this red ball came from or where it went. Another young boy who lived in the towers where Christopher lived had reported seeing Christopher later that evening walking down 111th Street, holding the hand of an unknown African-American male. The young boy who saw him was just seven years old, so police weren't sure what to make of this sighting, but they investigated it anyway. However, it didn't lead to any additional clues. As authorities investigated the case of Christopher Dansby, they fielded many, many tips, and they followed up on each and every one of them. Christopher's family was beyond distraught, and they were quickly cleared as having any involvement in his disappearance. Detectives working the case took it to heart. Christopher was just a toddler, and the entire community wanted answers. Three months later, On August 10th, 1989, Rosa Glover took her young 19-month-old son to the Martin Luther King Jr. playground. Rosa and her son Shane also lived in the Martin Luther King Jr. Towers. Once again, it was late afternoon, and Rosa and her son sat down on a park bench sharing an ice cream. After a few moments, two young children came up and asked if they could take Shane over and push him on the swings. At first, Rosa wanted to say no. She thought these kids, now one looked to be around 10 and the other maybe five or six, seemed too old to want to play with a toddler. Why would they want to play with a little boy not even two years old yet? However, she caved in and let them take Shane over to the swings. As soon as they walked off, a man sat down next to Rosa and struck up a conversation with her. He was talking about the recent kidnappings in the area, and he would even show Rosa some scars that he had from a fight he had been in. As he talked to her, she took her eyes off of Shane for just a moment. But that was all it took. When she looked back, she didn't see Shane anywhere. Her eyes started scanning the park for her son, but she didn't see him. She did find the two young children who had asked Shane to play with them, and she got up and ran over to them. They said that Shane had walked away from them and they didn't see where he went. Rosa, with a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach, looked back toward that bench that she was sitting on and the man that she was talking to, but the man wasn't there. She frantically scanned the park for him, but he was gone. Something wasn't right. Something felt very, very wrong to Rosa. Authorities quickly showed up to search for the missing boy. Astonished almost immediately at how similar this was to another case they had been working for the past three months, the case of Christopher Dansby. The similarities were uncanny. First, these boys were both around the same age, 19 months, and the other was two years old. They were both African American boys. They both lived in the same apartment building, although they didn't seem to know each other. Both boys vanished from the same park, the Martin Luther King Jr. playground. Each disappeared on a Thursday, and it was late afternoon in each case. In both instances, family and relatives were immediately cleared. It seems almost impossible for these cases not to be related, but all of these similarities could also be coincidences. There is no hard evidence to really connect them. Everything seems circumstantial. This brings up some questions. Who were these children that asked Shane to play with them? It seems that they were identified back in 1989. There is an implication that the police did speak to those children and nothing really came of it. Some feel that those kids were somehow involved and they were somehow used to lure Shane away on purpose. The timing did seem strange if it had anything to do with that man who sat down next to Rosa which also brings up some concerns about that man. He had just begun talking to her just as the kids had left with Shane to go to the swings. Was this all a setup? That man in the park that day was never identified. Taking a look at where this park is located, it's hard to believe that someone could vanish here in broad daylight. The Martin Luther King Jr. Park and Towers is located in north central Manhattan in the Harlem neighborhood. This is just north of Central Park. 
It's a very busy and very populated area. And these boys disappeared between 4 o'clock p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. There were likely people out and about everywhere, yet no one saw anything. As the investigation into both disappearances continued, the community became terrified. Was there a serial kidnapper out there looking for young boys? Was this the case of a black market baby ring? At one point, detectives also wondered if this was related to the kidnapping of Andre Bryant, which happened up in Brooklyn, New York, also New York City. Andre was kidnapped, likely by two women, and he was just one month old when he vanished in March of 1989, just two months before Christopher and five months before Shane was kidnapped. Andre's mother had met a couple of women who had taken her shopping with a stolen credit card. They convinced her to go out shopping with them the next day, and they insisted that she bring Andre with her, even though she wanted to leave the baby with a sitter. The women also asked her to meet them down the street that day, and so she walked out of her house with Andre and was never seen alive again. She was found deceased a week later in the Bronx, but there was no sign of baby Andre. The similarities are less noticeable here. Andre was just an infant boy. The other two were toddlers. This was in a different neighborhood, although it was still in New York City. Andre was African-American. However, it seemed that his mother was lured out of the home, possibly with the purpose of kidnapping Andre. So what do you think about these three cases? Do you think they are related or do you think they just have some eerily similar circumstances? Do you think Andre's case is completely unrelated? It does have less similarities than Christopher and Shane's. If any of these kidnappings were done for the purpose of an illegal black market baby ring, it's possible that all three of these boys are still alive today. Anyone who does have any information on the cases of Christopher Dansby, Shane Walker, or Andre Bryant can contact the New York City Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS. Remember, you can always remain anonymous with Crime Stoppers. For the families of Christopher Dansby and Shane Walker, a trip to the park will never be the same. Both Christopher's mother, Allison, and Shane's mother, Rosa, believe their sons are likely alive out there. They believe and they hope that they were adopted by families who loved them. And these boys probably don't even know their history of what happened when they were so little. Even though it has been so many years, both families have expressed that they will continue to search and hope for answers in their cases. Detectives that have worked the case have also said that this is that case that sticks with them. These boys were so young. The families were so distraught and the odd similarities between the two have haunted these detectives since 1989. These boys seem to disappear under the noses of many park goers in broad daylight in New York City. It's just such a baffling case and so sad. Thank you for listening to the stories of these young boys. A mystery, a few mysteries actually, that has plagued the Harlem area of New York City for so long. As I said earlier, let's hope that this is the year for answers. Thank you for being a supporter of the show, either on Patreon and or as a paid subscriber. As a member, I want to always encourage your thoughts and feedback. You can always send me a message over on Patreon, on any of the social media platforms, or email me at canwefindthem at gmail.com. We will be back again very soon with another unsolved missing persons case. And until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.